Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with my daughter's iPad because they just dropped a new feature that might be really useful if you're using your iPads right now as computers for your kids. They now have trackpad support in addition to keyboard support and the good news is is that you can use inexpensive third-party keyboard trackpad combos like this one to get the job done and we're going to be exploring how all of this works here in just a few minutes. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that everything you're about to see here today I paid for with my own funds. All of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this video, nor is anyone reviewing it or approving it before it gets uploaded. So let's get into it now and see how all of this stuff works. Now, in order to get all of this working, I do recommend looking for Bluetooth keyboards and mice. And what I've got here is the Logitech K830. This is one of my favorite combo devices. I use it all the time. I've owned this for probably about four or five years. And what's nice about this is that it will give the uh, iPad, the trackpad, and the keyboard over Bluetooth without any other adapters needed. Uh, you do get a little USB transceiver in the box with this, but it's not required. And it will really get up and running for you very quickly. And it's nice to have everything in one package. What's also cool about this is that the keyboard is backlit. So in a darker environment, it will light up. It's actually pretty decently uh, comfortable to type on as well. I really, really like this one quite a bit. Now, one thing you need to be careful about are other wireless keyboards that don't support Bluetooth. So for example, uh, this one from Logitech, this is their K400+. Plus. It's very inexpensive, but it requires that USB receiver to work. And therefore, you would need some way to plug USB into your iPad in order to get it working, even though it is wireless, because it does not support Bluetooth. So you'll pay a little more for this, but you won't have to buy an adapter like you would with this one. So it probably will wash out on cost. And I think that's probably the best way to go with this. Now, there are lightning to USB adapters for the iPad. So if you do have an existing keyboard and mouse that you want to use, you can get one of those. But if you have a keyboard with a USB connector and a mouse with a USB connector, you're going to then need to get a hub to plug multiple devices in, and this can get super complicated. So to keep your life simple, my advice is get the combo trackpad device like this one that supports Bluetooth, and you're good to go. Now, as you'll see in a few minutes, there are some things that you can't do on a third-party device that you can do on the more expensive Apple devices. And I will show you some of the things that don't work uh, so you can make your best decision here. But so far, for my kids at least, I think this is going to work just fine and it won't break the bank. All right, so here we are. This is the trackpad here working on the iPad. And you'll notice that we don't have a traditional mouse pointer. We've got this little circle. And what's cool is that things will be different depending on what you're hovering over. It's not just a single static arrow. It will behave differently and change its appearance. So for example, if I get it close to an app, it will kind of lock onto the app. And then I've got a little bit of leeway here too. So if you struggle uh, with trackpads, this will give you a little bit of a margin of error to play with here. Because you can see as I'm moving my finger around a little bit, the mouse pointer isn't leaving that app icon. It's only when I really go further away from it that it does. And that's really been kind of a neat experience. Uh, you can also, of course, click on apps down here in the taskbar. The same behavior applies. And you can just kind of run your finger back and forth between the apps as you go from one to the other. Uh, if we load up the Safari browser, you can see things pop up here. I am noticing a couple of little glitchy things, like it's zooming in on the page when I first click on it. Uh, and if I use two fingers here to scroll, that works. On the third-party products here, like the Logitech, it doesn't feel as smooth as it does on an Apple version, but it does work. Uh, but one thing that doesn't work here is the pinch to zoom, as you can see. It gets all confused, and I'll show you what does work uh, on the Apple trackpad in a minute. So that was my big disappointment, because this trackpad does support pinch to zoom on the Mac and on Windows, but it doesn't seem to be doing that here. And that, of course, will be an issue if that's something you need to do all the time on your iPad. You can, of course, uh, go back to the screen and do that, uh, but that kind of depletes the purpose of having a mouse. Uh, one thing you'll notice, though, is that as I hover over text, it will convert into a different style pointer. So it goes from a circle to a line. And then I can go through here and just kind of select some text. I could right-click on my right mouse button here. That'll pull up the dialog to do copy, look up, or share. Uh, now, like the icons we saw before 
as your mouse hovers over uh, the words here, it will kind of stick to the options, so you don't have to be completely precise all the time, which is really, really nice. But the one thing I noticed is that if I select an area of text here and then just put my mouse here in the middle and right click, uh, what will happen is it will put the dialog here at the top still. So you do have to move your mouse up to select the option you're looking for. On Mac OS and Windows, when you do that right click, it will usually put that dialog right underneath the mouse. So a couple of little things to get used to here, uh, but so far so good. Now the app doesn't need to require trackpad support to work, and I'll show you an example of that. Uh, this app here is called Joy Doodle, and this is something my daughter plays with quite a bit. I know this doesn't have direct trackpad support because it's an older app, uh, but as you can see here, I can put the mouse pointer over an icon and get things working. I can draw here on screen, and all of that seems to be working here with the trackpad just like it would if I were to use my finger on screen. Uh, the only difference I'm noticing here in the interface is that if I put my mouse pointer over one of these icons in the app, it doesn't stick to them. So it's more of a traditional computer experience here with the icons. So I'm sure over time, what will happen here is the developer will work to get these icons functional perhaps with the trackpad. But in the interim, everything just works here. I can click on that undo, for example, and get all the same functionality I would if I was pushing the screen. A couple other cool things to take a look at here. If you uh, go up to the top of the screen and kind of push up, it'll push down your notifications. If I do that on the right side of the screen here, you've got your slide over menu for some of the uh, brightness and volume controls and stuff. So you can really get at a lot of the controls here without ever touching the screen, which I think is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, now, if you load up an app that is prepared for our new trackpad functionality, if I go into notes, for example, uh, you'll see that when I go up to the icons here, it will get sticky as we get up to the top, which is pretty neat. So that seems to be uh, working well. So I think a lot of the native Apple apps will have some real good direct support for this, and that will include Safari as well. Uh, but some of the other apps might take a little bit of time to get that functionality going. Now the experience though is better if you opt for the more expensive Apple trackpads, of course. I've got my Magic Trackpad here. Let me show you how this works. All right, so we've got the Magic Trackpad connected. This, of course, is a Bluetooth device, but Apple makes it, so it's going to work better. And if we load up Safari, for example, you can see the scrolling is a lot more accurate. I can more slowly scroll, perhaps, or go very quickly. It just feels a lot smoother. Pinch to zoom works. That looks pretty cool. And then I can take two fingers out here, and if I go to the right, it will go back a page. It's like hitting the back button. And likewise, I can go to the left and go up to the page I was just on. If I pinch all the way out, you can go into your tab management here. So you can switch tabs just by clicking here, or you can uh, drag out there or pinch out and get both tabs up on screen like that. Uh, what's also cool is I can take uh, three fingers here and just drag up from the bottom, and that will bring us back to the home screen here. I could also take three fingers and just kind of scroll through uh, my different apps that are running here. So uh, that has a lot of uh, Mac-like functionality and some things that you can also do on the iPad screen as well. Uh, if I pull all the way back here, I can get all of the running apps currently. And again, a lot of these gestures don't work on the third-party uh, trackpads at the moment. And I really hope they make some changes to allow that because it really uh, is a much, much better experience here with the more expensive Apple device. And the problem you run into is when you're on a low-cost iPad, it's kind of a hard thing to justify uh, spending almost as much on your peripherals as you are on your device itself. So I'm hoping they do what they did with some of their pencil devices by allowing people to uh, license some of the technology so that you can get lower-cost devices out there, especially for students who might need some of these gestures for doing their work. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you that does work on both trackpads is that when you select an area of text, you can move it around and it give, gives you a very precise uh, drop point here. Uh, but again, the precision just feels better here on the Apple trackpad just because they have made the experience better uh, for their own products. So there you go. You can now use a mouse on an iPad without having to do anything else. Just connect it up after you update to iPad OS 13.4 
and you've got mouse control now and you can do uh, all the things that you would normally do on a computer uh, but now on uh, your iPad and I think it's going to help out a lot of students this week. Again, I hope we see some lower cost options for getting all of these gestures to work properly. I was kind of bummed that something as simple as pinch to zoom is not working on any of the third party trackpads that I have tried with my iPads today. Uh, so hopefully that will be something we see in the future. But right now it's a great way to get full computer functionality to your low cost iPads for your kids. And if you haven't installed the update, do it because you will gain some great functionality here for no cost and I think it will make life a little bit easier as we're all caught here working inside right now. So that's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.